What up, YouTube? It's your boy, King Cobra. I want to apologize ahead of time. My uh, Patreon videos this month are not going to be very entertaining as, well, the majority of pretty much all of my Patreon money is going into getting my account out of the negative. And, well, it's frustrating because it's not how I originally planned it. You know how you do it every month, like... Thank you, IC, for the $1 donation in Cash App. A uh, circle of protection and healing for a happy hippie. Uh, she hurt her back. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Um, Ah, uh, man, can you do six push-ups? A $6.66 donation from Austin. Yeah, I can do that. These are all Cash App shout-outs. So if you want a uh, shout-out, donate to Cash App or PayPal, and I'll give you a shout-out. Uh, I do appreciate Alex Campbell bringing over some alcohol earlier. Like, I got to a point where I was content with my alcohol and I passed out. Alex Campbell left after I passed out and freaking, yeah. So. Mm -mm -mm, delicious shout outs, man. Eight dollars and sixteen cents. Oh, look out! Debit card received from PayPal. Debit card received from PayPal. Any money I've been making as of today, I've just been putting um, back into my bank account. My bank account's been in the negative. And as I was in the process of getting it out of the negative, they charged me another overdraft fee. And I was like, man, that sucks. But I'm not complaining outside of that because I actually love the bank I bank with, you know. I like the bank I bank with kind of thing. Um... Uh... Right now, I am $52.14 in the negative, and I just transferred $8. And tomorrow, when I get the rest of my Patreon money, I'll be able to take all of that, and it'll be able to get, at least my account will be out of the negative, so that when I get the money I use for rent only, you know, it'll, it won't, it won't be in the negative then, kind of thing. Yeah. Hmm. So, like, I do appreciate everyone subscribing to my Patreon. You have no idea how much that saves my ass every month. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to plan something cool and challenging and fun. Well, I guess your definition of fun is different, YouTube. Um, let's see. Yep, I have fifty-four dollars and thirty-six cents left to process for Patreon. 
money, and I'm not going to be able to withdraw that till tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Um, if I'm $52 in the negative, then, like, when I transfer that $54.36, I'll be out of the negative, and I won't have to worry about, you know, so that's at least a relief. I, I barely have enough money to cover rent. Ah, the joys of being a starving artist. Eh. I suppose it's a bit melodramatic because, you know, I'm not entirely starving, but, eh. So, like, I appreciate it. Like, Alex Campbell came over with, like, some vodka, and I mixed it up with some G Fuel. And some Mexican Coke, which, of course, you saw that because you're just like, Cobra's really going to joke like that. Like, hey, guys, you want to see me do some cocaine? I got some really good Coke, man. And then he pulls up a bottle of Mexican Coke. It was a joke, people, because it's Coca-Cola used to be made with cocaine. And freaking, yeah. So, like, yeah, basically the only drink combo I have at the moment is in my glass. You people do not have to donate. You've already donated to my Patreon and PayPal and Cash App, you know. It's the first of the month, and bills come first. I totally get that. Like, if you want to donate, that's cool. If you can't, that's cool, too, you know. No pressure, man. I appreciate you all watching. However, I do have a food to try on camera. I specifically, because I was hungry and I wanted something to eat, I ordered something to try on YouTube. So, like, if you're going to order some food from DoorDash, at the very least, you could do a video and try it on camera kind of thing. Freaking. Uh, before I do that. Now I will be giving my Patreon subscribers a personal shout out video as well. Uh, I noticed that my Patreon subscribers have gone down. That's really a crying shame, to be honest. And really, that's your loss, you know? It really is. Like, you know, I'm, I, I draw a blank on trying to get, like, when I get PayPal donations and shit, it's awesome, you know? So, like, I'm sorry that not all of my Patreon videos are going to be as entertaining I personally think it's awesome that people get a personal shout out from King Cobra every month. So, now I ran out of the Coca Cola I was drinking. So, this is just straight black cherry G Fuel and a uh, strong bit of vodka. So, there you go. You know, and I'm like, I'm kind of bummed out, too, because, well, silver lining, I'll have enough money to keep my account and, like, put it back in the positive so that when I get my rent check, I'll be able to at least pay rent this month. But I got a friend with a birthday coming up, and I was hoping to have, have at least 40 bucks. 45 to like $57. I was hoping to have $57 to order them a nice birthday present. You know, I wanted to buy them one of my awesome t shirts from my customized girl. And uh, with like the, the quickest shipping, and it takes some time to make, the, make it kind of thing, you know, like they got to make the t shirt and plus. It takes a couple days to like ship it out once they've kind of thing. But the best part is, is that when I order said 
product, um, I can just ship it to my buddy's house. So even if the gift is a little late for their birthday, which I digress, I feel like shit because I don't have enough money to get them anything for their birthday. I barely have enough money to cover my, my fucking rents. And the reason why my account goes in the negative is because I order DoorDash for me and my my closest friends. You know, they feed me, I feed them. That's how that works kind of thing, you know. But, um, yeah, like I said, y'all don't have to donate. It's the weekend. I got a little food review for you here coming up. Uh, spoiler alert, it's just Pop-Tarts. Um, I like Pop-Tarts. I grew up eating them as a kid. Uh, my favorite Pop-Tarts flavor has got to be the chocolate chip cookie dough ones. You stick them in the freezer and they're delicious. But it's like, you know, I don't want to just do a Pop-Tart, a Pop-Tart review for my Patreon kind of thing, you know. It feels kind of like lame. Like after doing the uh, the spicy challenge that I did for my Patreon, where I literally did, okay, I literally ate the gummy bear of death. And then as soon as I ate that, I did the toe of Satan challenge. Okay, the gummy bear, the world's hottest gummy bear and the toe of Satan are both from, like, the same two candy companies. And doing them at the same time was fucking nuts. Like, you have no idea how much pain I put myself through to do that spicy video for Patreon. Put it to you this way. Okay, when I did that video, that shit burns. That, that, the hotness from eating the world's hottest gummy bear and then doing its candy candy cousin the uh, Toe of Satan challenge at the same time. Okay, like for the challenge for the gummy bear was to eat it and then go five minutes without relief. The Toe of Satan challenge, you pretty much stick the sucker in your mouth and leave it in there. You leave it in there until five minutes are up. So like my stomach, my stomach was already, it was, you know what I'm saying? I did it. I kept the sucker in my mouth. <clears throat> But that challenge was fucking painful, dude. I literally had to order a giant ass tub of Lucrane chocolate chip cookie, cookies and cream, you know, ice cream to help with the heat. I, I literally ended up stripping buck ass naked after doing that challenge. I just laying on the apartment, the floor of my apartment, breathing heavily and sweating profusely. Like, I literally sat in my bathtub with cold water in the bathtub, eating ice cream, trying to cool off my face and my body. And I eventually got there. You know what I'm saying? Like, when it's so fucking spicy, you start shaking and breathing heavily. And, like, you're like, <gasps> you know, and like, when it's so spicy, you're just laying buck ass naked on your apartment floor, sweating profusely, going, why did I do this for a fucking Patreon video? Like, it was so spicy, I couldn't post the video until after I cooled off a bit and I could actually see. That was fucking ridiculous. Doing, like, the world's hottest gummy bear challenge with the toe of Satan at the same time, that was fucking nuts and the the candy company that makes the toe of satan challenge is no fucking joke dude and people are like and you know after i did that challenge like i've had to cut down on my spicy food just so i don't burn out because i love eating spicy food i don't just i just don't like when it comes out kind of thing you know So I'm sorry if my Patreon videos this month aren't very entertaining as I make more money and, you know, come come up with crazier drink combos. I'll be giving my Patreoners personalized shout-outs. But I definitely wanted to give them a personal shout-out here on a live video because 
you have no idea how much I appreciate all my fans and my Patreon subscribers. Uh, excuse me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I don't mind my account going in the negative when I order food. That's just human nature. Even if, like, I don't do a review on it, I got to eat, man, you know? I ran out of I ran out of toilet paper this morning. So that's kind of an immediate need, you know. I don't want to be wiping my ass with napkins and then throwing them in the trash because you can't flush napkins down the toilet kind of thing, you know. That's kind of eh. that's kind of redneck, dude. I'm just saying. I wouldn't say ghetto because that's kind of racist. So I want to say redneck. I think we've all been there, done that, brought the t-shirt, you know, so, like, I did DoorDash me, two Coca-Colas, and I did a review of it on the, uh, the fancy Coca-Cola in the glass bottle on my YouTube with that joke video that I made, where I'm like, hey, YouTube, you want to see Coke, we'll do some Coke, and then I, <laughs> I pull out the, uh, Coca-Cola bottle just to fuck with people, it's like, you see the thumbnail and you're just like, Oh, Josh played joke. Josh drink a Coke, you know, kind of thing. Like, okay, I'm not going to do the, you know, the uh, saying, and I'm not going to do it. I'm extremely grateful that I have enough money to break even and I'll be able to afford rent. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. Um, but I want to give my Patreoners a shout out. <clears throat> Good Mythical Evening is going to be happening tomorrow. So hopefully you got your tickets. I went and got my tickets ahead of time. So like I'm already prepared for five o'clock tomorrow evening. Get to see Rhett Link get drunk. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Like that's kind of how my friendships work with like people that I know. If they're in a tight spot and they want some food, you know, I'll order food, feed them and myself for the evening or for a couple days, kind of thing. You know, and then my friends in turn, they feed me back, you know, they offer me food. So, you know, hey, that works out, man. Ah, uh, who could this be? I wonder. One second. The dude got the wrong apartment. That's all right. I was just like, do I know you? <laughs> Knowing me, I thought it was going to be one of my trolls fucking with me again. Like, oh, geez. Like, Cobra is uh, straight for the of-age ladies, but you know how that goes down. Like, oh, I thought this was, you know, it's like, no, it's... And it happens, dude. I get that. You know, no worries. But yes, yeah, so I do have a little bit of alcohol in my cup here, courtesy of uh, Warlord. Thank you for bringing over the vodka. I appreciate it. Like, my account was soup. My account at my bank was super in the negative. And I'm all bummed out about that. So, like, every bit of money I've been making today has been going towards getting my account out of the negative kind of thing. So, it is what it is. 
I do plan on getting my friend one of my awesome t-shirts from Customized Girl for their birthday. It just, it's not going to, it may not be on their actual birthday kind of thing, you know. And I'm not going to say which friend it is because, quite frankly, it doesn't matter. I I know for a fact that I owe Darflinny a sword. Because I told Darflinny I want to get you a sword, man. And the one I originally wanted to get him is no longer sold on that website. So I legitimately have a sword that I want to get Darflinny as a man of my word. And right now I cannot afford to do that. But the sword I've picked out is pretty fucking badass. So when Darflinny least expects it, he's going to get... A really badass uh, sword. You know, my my only request for that is that he, he unboxes it for a YouTube video. Because I am a man of my word, YouTube. That is a fact. I don't have a whole lot of Patreon subscribers at the moment. Um... But you know what? That's all right. I appreciate the ones that I do have. I know, like, the $20 Cool Cobras uh, Patreon. It says things like you'll get shirtless working out and shit like that. Uh, I've been feeling self-conscious about my body the last couple of months. So the shirtless videos are kind of, eh, you know. <clears throat> but King Boggy B, thank you for joining the Chill Cobras Patreon for six dollars sixty six cents. I appreciate it, uh, Clipper. Thank you for your six dollars sixty six cent donation. Filibusta, that's what's up, brother. For the twenty dollar Cool Cobras. So I have two tiers on my Patreon. I have the Chill Cobras and the Cool Cobras. Chill Cobras is the cheapest one. You pay $6.66 a month. And Cool Cobras is a bit more expensive. It's 20 bucks a month. Again, I don't expect my fans to donate money or like join my PayPal or Patreon, or what, or Cash App, or what have you, you know, if you guys are tuning in to watch the video, that's most definitely what the fuck is up. Tyler Banksy with the Chill Cobras, thank you for your donation. Brian Hunley for the Chill Cobras, yeah, Scott Burns, the Chill Cobras, that's what's up. Knife Show, thank you for joining the Chill Cobras Patreon tier. Why Samuel? Thank you for the joining the Chill Cobras. Rad Wizard. Thank you for joining the uh, Cool Cobras tier. Courtney Sucks Discord is a part of the uh, Cool Cobras tier. And Brennan Kepler. Thank you for joining the Chill Cobras tier. I'll be doing more Patreon videos over this month to make up for not having, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I didn't have to put my account back out of the fucking negative, I'd have more money. And that's kind of my fault because, honestly, I love ordering DoorDash. It's convenient. I don't have to go to the grocery store and put up with people. People gawking at me like... Oh my god, it's King Cobra. I don't get it twisted, fam. I appreciate my fam, my family, and my fans, and my friends. But, like, if you're a fan of King Cobra and you want to hang out or talk or get an autograph or a, a, photo, a selfie taken with, with you kind of thing and you see me in public... Don't be afraid to ask. I'm never too busy to talk to my fans. You know, 
the fans are more important to me than any amount of money that I make doing YouTube. If anything, the money's a bonus. <clears throat> So I'm going to take a fucking squizzle of this here drag. Mm. Like people are so quick to call Alex a mooch and it's like... Well, he's broke too, and he provides when he can, so that that should be good enough, dude. You know, it's not about what your friends provide; it should be about the friendships. To be honest, now I thought about saving this pop tart review for my Patreon subscribers, but for for me, I don't know. To me, it just that feels kind of boring and lackluster like compared to doing the world's hottest gummy bear on the toe of satan challenge at the same time and the amount of pain i went through eating both and trying both of those spicy foods like that shit was not fun dude i'm not gonna lie that was intense like my fans legitimately sent me the world's spiciest gummy bear and not only did my fans send that to my P.O. box, the world's spiciest gummy bear, but they also sent me the Toe of Satan challenge. And I've done both the world's spiciest gummy bear and the Toe of Satan challenge separately for YouTube. However, you know, combining the two was freaking nuts, dude. Like, the I'm not going to lie, dude. Doing that... Doing those two together at the same, the, doing the Toe of Satan challenge and then taking its candy cousin and doing the world's spiciest gummy bear. Ouch, dude, that was not fun. Okay, I love spicy food, don't get me twisted. I'm a bit of a pepper junkie myself. However, freaking, that wasn't fun, dude. Nope, that was not fun. But I did it for my Patreon subscribers. And the first thing I thought after getting done doing it, lasting five minutes with the toe of Satan in my mouth, while doing the, you know what I'm saying? Like, literally, you have two two separate, like, nine million plus Scoville unit candies. And, um, freaking, when you do the world's hottest gummy bear, you're supposed to eat it. And then wait five minutes before you take any sort of relief, like ice cream or flour water or Tums or Pepto-Bismol, etc. I forget the, the candy company that makes those, but their candies are no joke, dude. You know, it's almost the weekend, too, so like I have just barely enough money in my Patreon to get my account out of the negative. You know what I'm saying? So, like, by the time my rent check hits my account tomorrow and the rest of my Patreon money hits after 10 o'clock, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll have a couple bucks in my account, so it won't be in the negative. That's a good feeling. Like, you have no idea. I'm equally as grateful for every dollar and dime that I make on on YouTube, you know. That's, that's pretty much the only reason why I was trying to get 200 bucks for my hair dye video was because I could use that money to provide for more content. And you know what I'm saying? Like, but my Patreon, like, I cashed out some of my Patreon money today and, like, the rest is being cashed out tomorrow. So... Tomorrow, when I cash out the rest of my Patreon money at 10 o'clock, you know what I'm saying? My account will no longer be in the negative. I got like $57 coming from Patreon, and if my account is $52 in the negative, like I've been doing that all fucking day. Every little tiny amount of cash that I make in PayPal or Cash App, 
I give them a shout out and I put it back into my bank account. Now, sometimes my account goes in the negative because I not only order DoorDash for me and my friends when, when we're hungry, I also order it for like YouTube videos, you know? Like Burger, Burger King came out with their new royal chicken sandwiches, the bacon and Swiss and the barbecue joint. And they're fucking good, dude. And you know what I'm saying, YouTube? Mm. But anyways, I hope you're all having a beautiful uh, Thursday evening. Like I said, I don't have money right now to do drink combos or food combinations or food hacks, which that's kind of the downside to overdrawing your account, really. Honestly, I'm not complaining. My life could be 10,000 times worse. If the worst I have to complain about is I haven't been late in five years and I overdraw my account sometimes, then I'm not complaining. You know, YouTube. Yeah. Ah, I'm a popular guy today, I guess. Hold up. Oh, sorry, I must have the wrong fucking apartment. Uh, that's twice that's fucking happened. I'm like, dude, I don't know these fucking people showing up to my fucking apartment. You know, my trolls were digging themselves into a fucking grave they can't dig themselves out of. And eventually it's going to catch up to them. Uh, I had this box of Pop-Tarts in the freezer all goddamn day. So these are uh, lemon cream pie flavored Pop-Tarts. You believe that? Now I wanted, to, you know what I'm saying? Like I wanted to do something crazy and different for my video. Like do a review of a product that looks interesting. I like lemon cream pie flavored stuff. It's a tasty flavored pie. And uh, like, I like Pop-Tarts, not a sponsor. Like I said, my favorite Pop-Tart flavor would have to be the chocolate chip cookie dough flavor. You stick them in the freezer and eat them for breakfast. They're delicious. Um, I'm not sure how these are gonna taste, but I kind of think to myself, <clears throat> Oh, look at that. We got... Look at that. This box comes with four packets of Pop-Tarts. Look at that. Freshly opened. All right. So we're going to pull a packet out. Now we only have three left in the packets. So we'll keep the packet out for reference. The box, I mean. So check that out, YouTube. We got lemon cream pie flavored Pop-Tarts. I creamed your mom's pie last night. <laughs> okay, calm down, Cobra. But no, before I open the box, before I open the box of Pop-Tarts, I stuck them in the freezer, you know, because uh, you can do that. With Pop-Tarts, you can eat them. You can toast them in the toaster and then eat them, you know. Or you could stick them in the freezer or just eat them as is. Okay, so. We're going to unbox the goods. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Strip that Pop-Tart of its clothing, you dirty bitch. Okay. <laughs> Jokes aside, what do you guys and gals think? This is what the... Uh, Lemon cream pie pop tarts look like they got like this lemon frosting with some kind of sprinkles on top. All right, let's try a bite. Mm. 
Mm. Ooh. I definitely gotta brush my teeth more because sometimes eating sweets. My teeth don't hurt surprisingly, but that's regardless. Mm. Mm. All right, YouTube, I took the first bite of this seemingly new flavor of Pop-Tarts. However, the flavor is new to me. Honestly, <clears throat> excuse me. I have no idea how long this, this particular flavor of Pop-Tarts has been out. Um... Proudly baked in the United States of America. Fuck yeah. Okay, so Pop-Tarts are proudly made in America. That's what the fuck is up. Um, Pop-Tarts is... Kellogg's Pop-Tarts are not a sponsor. This is just free advertisement. I gotta say this. The lemon cream pie Pop-Tarts, you get the Cobra seal of approval. I like lemon cream pie flavored stuff. Like I've had cookies that taste oddly similar to it. Not to be confused with the dog named Cookie. <laughs> yeah. Mmm. These uh, lemon cream pop tarts are delicious, YouTube. Mmm. I don't know what the fuck those dudes are here for. Like, I'm straight, so if they're here from fucking Grinder, then fuck my trolls, honestly. Mmm. These are really tasty, YouTube. If you like lemon cream pie flavored stuff, then I would highly recommend these Pop Tarts. I do apologize if this video is boring, like you're sitting here watching me drink vodka and fucking do a Pop-Tart review. There's a cross-section. The uh, inside of these Pop-Tarts have like a lemon cream pie sort of filling. That's what's up. I don't know, like, when I do my videos, I want people to get excited, you know? Like, I don't want people to be bored by my videos. Like, oh my god, Cobra's doing a Pop-Tart review. I want to stick these back in the freezer for later, because I, I got three of these packets. They came with, like, four per box. That's a pretty good deal. I got three packets left, so I'll just stick them in the freezer. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to watch some uh, videos on YouTube while I snack out on these. Uh... Oh, look, the Boglum's doing a Pop Tard review. There you go. There's an idea for a King Cobra YouTube poop video. The Boglum tries pop tards. Uh, look at the dumb autistic. Uh, I like pop tards. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. But yeah, I like the uh, lemon cream pie flavored Pop Tarts. I don't know how new they are to the, to the uh, Pop Tarts game. However, 
I'll fuck with it. Like they're tasty. It reminds me of like lemon cream pie cookies in, in a way, you know what I'm saying? Come on out. Oh, look out. So we have a YouTuber by the name of Vartan Fresh. And he's doing a mukbang eating challenge for Nashville hot chicken, Nashville hot fish, hot wings from Whistling Dixie. Well, you you ain't just a whistling Dixie. <laughs> okay. It is my spot for sandals and sneakers. Speaking of, <laughs> look at the YouTube ad. Does the of age chick in the beginning come with the sneakers? <laughs> Like some of these YouTubers I watch are fucking beast at what they do, dude. Okay, like there's so many awesome YouTubers that I watch that do like, you know, food eating challenges and stuff like that. And it's just like, you know, I have potential to do awesome content like that. If I quit failing it every time I try to fucking do it. No, I'm sorry, but it's a fucking joke when I'm sitting there trying to create my own local fast food challenges and I can't even complete it. You know, when I go to the home stretch bar and grill, the big kahuna hot dog challenge, or I do the big kahuna chili cheese dog with everything on it, plus fries, you know, and then I do like 12 stinging, singing hot honey garlic wings. And some cheese curds. So, like, you're literally getting a basket of fries, a basket of cheese curds, 12 delicious wings, and um, a big ass fucking chili cheese dog for a, a real, relatively reasonable price. Like, and one day I'll complete that challenge. I've come pretty close a couple times. Uh, In my defense, when you do the Big Kahuna hot dog challenge that I created from the home stretch bar and grill here in town, that's a lot of food in one. That's like thirty dollars worth of food in one sitting, you know. The biggest reason why I wanted two hundred dollars to do my Patreon or not Patreon, excuse me, but my hair dye video is because. I have a cooking video lined up. My next cooking video, YouTube, is going to be meatloaf, okay? I'm going to King Cobra JFS up some meatloaf. Like, I got the recipe in my head. I watched Kid Behind the Camera make a meatloaf for Angry Grandpa. And when I saw how easy it was to make meatloaf, I was like, wait, hold up. I could do that for a YouTube video. <sighs> Get out of here, fly. I will say this. Thank you to the apartment complex I live in for installing screens into my windows that needed it because the fly, the, fly the fly problem is no bueno. You know, it's non-existent. Like last summer, you know what I'm saying? Like you're busy and it's a pretty minor repair and like I get that, so no worries kind of thing I actually like where I live my new apartment is so much better than my old apartment you know my trolls basically pretended to be my neighbors at my old apartment and they submitted false false neighbor complaints my neighbors at my old apartment never had a problem with me Hopefully none of my neighbors at my new apartment have a problem with me. If they do, I apologize, man. I'm not trying to cause trouble for anyone. I pretty much keep to myself. If I see my neighbors outside and I'm smoking a cigarette and they're walking their dog, I'm like, yo, sweet dog, man. Can I pet him? Oh, is that doggy? Who's that doggy? Being as I'm super fucking autistic, Dude, I love dogs. They're awesome. Yeah.
And like, I don't need a therapy dog, to be honest, YouTube, I really don't, because one, I can't afford it, and two, all of my neighbors, family, and friends have dogs, so like, if I want my dog fix, you know, I don't gotta go very far to get it. As somebody who uh, struggles with Asperger's Syndrome, uh... I find petting a dog is very therapeutic. See, I'm not going to fucking answer that because we've already been through this fucking crap multiple times. Oh, sorry, I must have the wrong apartment. Like, fucking stupid, dude. I'm not doing this crap for a third time. Mmm. I know, Cobra said he's straight, but let's sign him up for the opposite grinder and have a bunch of gay dudes show up to his apartment. It would be fucking hilarious. And it's like, when they recognize my face, they know who the fuck I am. They're like, that's King Cobra. He fights for gay rights, but he's straight. Heterosexual male. Huh. You want to get mad at Cobra for saying the word faggot on YouTube? But, like, sending gay dudes to his apartment is way too far, dude. Like, congratulations, you have no fucking life. But anyways, we're going to watch this YouTuber go ham on this spicy food. Do appreciate you all watching the stream. How the fuck did it already get into like 48 minutes? Eh. I'm buying yours too, yeah. Of course you are. I have my wallet at home. My, at least my shorts are on backwards, my wallet's on the kitchen table. Oh, here she goes with the camera. Yeah, she's coming with the camera for the for your for the failure. Holiday. Holiday. That's right. Man, can you believe it's been five goddamn years since Angry Grandpa passed away? I've grieved. I've gotten over it to a point, but like, I feel so bad for kid behind the camera. The dude's got kids, and his dad died. I'm like, oh, that sucks, bro. And. I'm so subscribed to Kid Behind the Camera because my subscription puts food on their table, you know, and it's my way of keeping Angry Grandpa's memory alive. I can remember when Angry Grandpa passed away about five years ago. It will be five years in like two months. September, October, November, yeah, two months. No, I remember, I remember the day fondly, and it was not a pleasant memory. My girlfriend, Summer, broke up with me because she couldn't handle eating a YouTube celebrity. And what's sadder than that is my YouTube trolls couldn't handle me having an of-age, alive, cisgendered, non-related, consenting girlfriend. And I didn't care if she was older than me. I didn't care if she had short hair. She made me happy to a point, you know, like anyone would, and uh, I did the best I could to treat her right and not do anything fucked up or stupid, and the trolls literally harassed my last girlfriend to the point 
where they where she's like, you know what, Josh, you're a sweet guy, but I can't take dating a YouTube celebrity. And I'm like, well, that's your loss, not mine. Whatever, you know. I don't let that stop me from talking to women, to be honest. So, and the only reason the trolls do that crap is because they're secretly gay and they have a harder time getting laid than Cobra does. So, like, I'm sitting here watching Angry Grandpa do the Philly cheesesteak challenge, and I'm like, dude. <laughs> oh, man, I was going to eat your... That shit looked good. It's over. <laughs> so, I'm going to see what Dad's fingernails taste like. Ew. It's good. Did you bring me the bill, too? <laughs> Oh, okay. How much you have left of what your comments are? Right, give me a pin. Got pin? You can really be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Bridget just texted me. Told me to come here. Like I'm in the house still. Huh? Like now that you know that kid behind the camera is scripted, it's like, okay, how far is he willing to take it with the video? So you'd be like, oh, guys, okay, I swear to God, it's not clickbait. Man, and I want to come right out and say it. Kids are more precious than life itself. I fucking hate sickos, dude. Blue shirt. Red. What size? What, 8X? <laughs> <laughs> you got you got. I hate sick fucks more than I hate my trolls, to be honest with you. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. Now, you get a failure shirt. That would be the beauty prize. <laughs> seeing what kid behind okay i'm not trying to be a dick but seeing what kid behind the camera has to go through because he has kids to raise i'm like dude why the fuck am i bitching about my dry spell like i'm sorry kid behind the camera but God damn, brother, that's got to suck ass. I'm sitting here going, I don't got to fill my fridge up with shit, but whatever the fuck I want to do. And to a point, bachelor life is freaking sweet. Freaking sweet. <laughs> like, I'll admit it, kid behind the camera can be cringe sometimes, but like, to a point, he makes you laugh. You know, if you've been subscribed to his channel since since AGP, like the other day I showed one of my YouTube, well, excuse me, one of my friends that I have outside of YouTube, I was talking with them and I don't know how the conversation came up to be honest, but I was telling them about Angry Grandpa and it, getting his 55 Chevy and the, uh, the video of Pickle Boy and Bridger West giving Angry Grandpa his 55 Chevy at Christmas time was just so heartwarming, dude. Like, I'm not going to lie, I cried watching it because, ugh. You know what I'm saying? Ever since uh, Pickle Boy's father passed away, honestly, I felt bad for him ever since. And, like, it's made me appreciate my father, to be honest. It really has, you know. When I saw Angry Grandpa get his 55 Chevy back, it made me want to get my dad's Mustang back for him. But, like, he beat me to it, so there you go. You don't even know, YouTube. My dad's 66 Mustang is <sighs> chef's kiss, okay? I'm just saying, if I have the kind of money, I don't want to think about it, knock on glass, but, like, when my dad dies, I want to bury him with his Mustang, you know, unless I have my dream house, and then in which case I'll keep it under a tarp. 
and like take it out on occasion just to like clean it and keep it going kind of thing. Ugh. You know, I don't want to think about that right now. It's, that's kind of depressing. You know, me and my dad are going to fight about stupid shit, and my trolls are going to try as hard as they can to start drama between me and my dad, but at the end of the day, at least my dad cares, you know? And how many of my trolls can say they have a dad as awesome as mine? Oh, that's right, none of them. None of them. Most of these little sad fucking cocksucking losers are being raised by single moms who don't give a shit about them. And they're secretly jealous of King Cobra because I have a mom and a dad. Even if she's my stepmom, I still consider her my mom because she raised me, you know? I might, have, I might have had a lot of anger towards my birth mother growing up, but I've learned to let go of a lot of that, a lot of that because it is what it is. Like, situations be like, you know... My stepmom is awesome, but, like, my biological mother was raised in an overly strict Christian household. So, what do you do? Plus, my stepmom was mentally unfit to raise children. That's the only reason why my dad divorced her. And to be honest, that was some nasty divorce, divorce court type shit. Even at a young age... Okay, the courts wanted to give my psycho, my psycho fucking biological mother, you know, custody rights. And I said, no. So before, like, before my dad met my stepmom, we were pretty much batching it. Yeah. I think I get my entrepreneurship from my father, to be honest, because my dad has had several self-owned businesses growing up. Like, my dad had his own gymnastics gym. He called Rhino Gymnastics. Because my dad's favorite animals are rhinos. And it's sad because rhinos are actually... Extinct. If they're not extinct, they're damn near extinct. And uh, king cobras are actually on a. Speaking of favorite animals, king cobras are actually on the endangered list because people see them in Indonesia and Southern Asia. They like, you know, when when the cobra, when king cobras come into contact with humans. People freak out and kill them because they don't want to get bit. Understandable, but here's the thing of it. If you watch Kevin the King Cobra or Justina from Chandler's Wildlife, uh, excuse me, you will see that they, they just want to get away. They want to be left alone and they want to get away. You know, you'll notice that cobras in general do not strike unless they are provoked. Okay? They will not fight unless they have to. Like, and then I found, like, you know, watching Keep Behind the Camera, I found out that his sister had uh, cervical cancer. And I'm like, Jesus, dude. You think just because Kid, Kid Behind the Camera has got more subscribers on YouTube than I do, it's like... That doesn't mean shit, dude. Like, to a degree, you know, I have enough empathy in my cold, goth, dead heart to be like, that sucks, dude. And I, I remember thinking to myself, don't let Jenny die, dude. Fuck that, okay? That She's got kids to raise. Fuck that, dude. She's not going anywhere for a long time, okay? Now, luckily, they had a they Jenny Jenny got a surgery. She had to have a hysterectomy, and for those of you who don't know, a hysterectomy is 
a very, very, very difficult procedure for women. You think periods are tough? Okay, you have no idea. Dude, fuck the sex. I sympathize with women because of the crap they have to go through. Just because they're women, you know? That being said, I want to send Kid Behind the Camera some Maverick number three because it's green like his last name. <laughs> They're like, bro. Like if Bridger West can't keep her hands off of you, well, that's not my fault. And if you want that kind of effect on of age women, you got to check out Tactical Soap. Link, description box below. And with coupon code King Cobra, I'm using my affiliate link. That helps me make some money and it helps you save some money. Okay, don't waste your money on Dr. Squatch, which I call Dr. Squat because Dr. Squatch, dude. Nope. The bars from Dr. Squatch are a lot smaller and more expensive. Okay, it, it is also a cold cut press soap, but it doesn't have the pheromones. So like I pretty much spent all day watching YouTube videos out with Alex Campbell. And then I passed out when I passed out he took off. You know? That's how it is. I don't care if it's Alex Campbell or not. Like, I share what I have, and my friends will share with me when, when what they have. And a lot of people are like, you're going to forgive Alex after what he did to you, after he tried to fight you in your own apartment? I'm like, you learn to forgive in life, but you don't forget. That is wise words to live by. Because there's enough fucked off problems in the world. Unless they really did you dirty, then, like, it's pointless holding a grudge. Now, if you're a Harry Potter fan and you like smoking pot... Check out the customized girl website, King Cobra's Fang. I got a friend whose birthday is coming up, and as soon as I get them enough money for a t shirt, I'm going to send it to their address. The company name on the packaging will say King Cobra's Fang, which is the name of my customized girl shop. So if you want to help King Cobra out on his channel, Buy some tactical soap using the affiliate link and the coupon code and buy a t-shirt. I'll be getting some more wands on my Etsy store, hopefully uh, starting over the weekend. Uh, I have barely just enough money to get my account out of the negative. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock, um, the rest of my Patreon money is going to transfer to my uh, rest of, to my account so that when I get my rent my rent money I'm not gonna have to, I'm not gonna have to like worry about it you know kind of thing check out this badass ring dude one of my fans sent it I took the American flag one and I put it in the little brown bag that I had this one in and kept it for safekeeping that I change up my look a bit. And with like my, my hair being dyed black recently, it kind of fits. You got a skull with goat horns, with, with like ram horns. That's satanic as shit. No, I can't get my dad his Mustang because he beat me to it. But if I win the lottery, I'm going to build my dad 
a custom hot rod. My dad's always wanted a 32 Ford three window coupe. And, uh, dude, if I won the lottery, I'd build me a hot rod and I'd build my dad a hot rod. I'd pay people to do it. You know, it's also my dad's birthday in September, and I'm I'm not sure what I what I want to get him. You know, I want to make my dad a custom made Daisy Red Rider like the one I made Scotty's nephew. You know, the gold the golden one with the glow in the dark, like you know. But like, eh. Although it does get annoying when my dad constantly reminds me, your account's in the fucking negative. He doesn't say it like that, but it's like, dude, you think I don't already know? I'm working on it. Towards the end of his life, Angry Grandpa met an awesome woman by the name of Lauren. And they were so cute together. It was just, you know, it was adorable. So, like, watching that, you know, it, it's one of those things, YouTube. It's why I quit bitching about my dry spell. Because you look at celebrities like Bob Saget, who didn't meet his his widowed wife until like later on towards the end of his life. And Bob Saget was murdered by the pedophiles who try to run Hollywood. Don't bullshit yourself. People spent years ripping on them and they, they had enough of it. Those are the same assholes who murdered Chester Bennington because that's how it is. And you want to call it a conspiracy theory? I'm like, open your eyes, people. The lead singer of Lincoln Park was the lead singer of Lincoln Park, Chester Bennington. Okay. He was doing a documentary exposing all the fucking sick fucks in Hollywood. And then, co then coincidentally, while working on that documentary, he just mysteriously dies of a random suicide. Fuck that. You know how easy it would have been? To, like, get his wife and kids out of the fucking house. Enough for just enough time for them to execute their plan. Break into his house. While Chester is home. While wearing gloves and carrying a noose. Okay. And then, like, staging it so that, like, it, when the police dust the noose for fingerprints, all that come up is Chester's fingerprints. And then they see him hanging there. And they think, well, you know, Chester Bennington had issues with depression and drugs and shit. And, like, so it would have been convenient to make it look like a suicide, dude. Don't be a sheeple. Pay attention. And fuck pedophiles, dude. Fuck sickos in general. Like, ugh. Don't even get me started on that. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole because I'm so grossed out by sickos. You know, it's the combination of not having sex for almost five years. Every chick I like tells me no, and I fucking hate sickos. It's enough to make me want to lose interest in sex and dating, to be honest. To a point. Then when you see a cute chick at the bar, you're just like, hey, hey. You like Harry Potter? Can I slither into your DMs? You want to see my basilisk? People are sitting there going, you need to get laid. And it's like, dude, sex is not a need. It's a want. There's way too much pressure on, on people to get laid and get married. Look at Elliot Rogers sitting there throwing a bitch fit because he couldn't get laid. I'm like, fuck that piece of shit. If you can't get laid and you're driving around in sports cars, you're a fucking creep, dude. No offense, but 
Actually, every offense taken. Fuck Elliot Rogers. And it's like, you think having Asperger's has enough bad PR? It gets worse. Now we can't even call it Asperger's because the scientist who discovered it was a German Nazi. And I'm like, seriously? Really? Can we not? Like, fuck white supremacy while we're at it. Can we seriously not do this crap? Like, people with Asperger's don't need any more bad PR. Can we not do this crap, please? The thing you have to remember is that there are a lot of good people who suffer from autism and Asperger's, and you can't let the assholes ruin it, dude. You know, really, I can't complain. It's almost the weekend. I have a, a bunch of awesome YouTube fans. And tomorrow, I'll have enough money to put my account out of the negative. Now, once I get my account out of the negative, i got to be a little bit more careful at watching, you know, my account. And and the friends that I the friends that I order DoorDash for, I eat with them. And they, they do for me what I do for them. You know, it's it's back and forth, you know. I, I do have a very small group of friends that I hang with and they're good to me and I'm good to them kind of thing, you know. I, I'd rather have a small group of close friends than have like a bunch of acquaintances that I barely know, to be honest. I'm not particularly hungry, otherwise I'd finish the Pop-Tarts that I'm reviewing. But they're there right in front of me to snack on while I watch YouTube videos. But I appreciate you all tuning into the live stream, you know, just sitting here bullshitting the breeze. You don't have to donate money to my channel, but if you do, it's greatly appreciated. You know? Now I'm gonna now like Sherry said, I'm gonna stamp failure across your face there. Oh, Boom, I'm gonna stamp my foot across your ass. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Michael. The chicken did it, man. The chicken did me. Now I'm watching Angry Grandpa smoke a cigarette, and I'm like, what the fuck did I do with my cigarettes? And I look over, and I'm like, here they are. And, like, I try to be a fair motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Like, I try to be a fair person. See, I got two rolled cigarettes like this one. Like, Alex Campbell traded me two rolled cigarettes for two NXTs. And I'm like, that's a fair trade, two for two. You know what I'm saying? And Alex Campbell was like, oh, I feel bad because marble rolls are more expensive and hand rolls, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, don't worry about it, okay? I don't mind sharing my cigarettes with people. I know how it is. Okay. As a smoker, I get it. Oh, yeah. FDA can kiss my ass. Yeah, I said it. The Food and Drug Administration can kiss my ass. I'll be goddamn if they take away my NXTs. I'm like, what about the prescription drugs that doctors are being forced to give people? Side effects may include, like, you want to argue that you want to ban menthol cigarettes just because they're bad for your health? 
That's a fucking oxymoron. You know, and our, our founding fathers grew tobacco. Our country was founded by tobacco, hemp, cannabis, and cotton. So, and corn for that matter. So it's like, hey. You know what I'm saying? So like George Washington, our first goddamn president, would be rolling in his fucking grave if he saw what our country was doing to tobacco. So if you want to attack tobacco, because smokers are unhealthy, quite frankly, because our founding fathers, our founding fathers grew tobacco on their plantations. So quite frankly, if you're attacking tobacco and you're against cannabis, you're an unconstitutional piece of shit. Because the Declaration of Independence was drafted on hemp paper. The first United States flag that flew in our country, the very first old glory, the very first United States flag was made out of hemp. There was a, col there was a colonial ship that the original Americans had. They took a sail from that colonial ship and sewed an American flag on it, onto it, with hemp string. That very historic photo of George Washington and his troops bravely holding up the flag during the Independence War, the war that won this country our freedom, that flag was drafted and sewn on hemp cloth. YouTube. George Washington, our first goddamn president, smoked marijuana for his toothaches and his, er and his erectile dysfunction. Don't believe me? Look it up. It's in Washington's journal in the Library of Congress. Our country is broke from the fucking pandemic. Gas is expensive. Chicken! Of all things, chicken! Okay, chill. You're on both sides of the road right now. I feel like I'm on covered both sides of the road right now. To some degree, yes, Angry Grandpa's anger was scripted, but that's what made it entertaining. You know? The anger you see me display on camera is the opposite. The anger you see me display on my YouTube channel in the past is real because of my autism. I struggle with that. And my trolls are all throwing it in my face like, you're a piece of shit, Cobra. And it's just like, you know what? Thank you for reminding me of what I look like when I lose my temper. So like, in some fucked up sort of way, you know, that's helped me with my temper. I knew you wouldn't have done that. I told you beforehand, don't do the challenge. Why don't you just shut the fuck up? I did the best I could, alright? It was a goddamn chicken! It was the fucking chicken! Uh, so how the fuck are you gonna call it a Philly cheesesteak when it's made with chicken? Bitch! Unless they have like two versions of it. Hurry up and tell you! Yeah, listen. But I've had like New York pizza where like the pizza slice slices are like that big and that fucking wide, and you gotta like literally fold it and like, you know what I'm saying? I have not had an authentic Philly cheesesteak sandwich. However, someday I will try it. You know what I'm saying? I can get Philly cheesesteak sandwiches here in town. There are a couple of bars who serve it slash restaurants. However, it's not authentic, authentic, you know. Fuck a bell. God, man. I like Philly cheesesteak in general. I got a good sandwich. I think had you listened to Lori and you stopped drinking and stopped talking, you could have done it. Shut up! I told you, it was that chicken! 
So you think you could have done it if it was two steaks? If I eat the steak first, I believe I could have done it. But I ain't going for round two. I don't want no bill again on this. My, I swear to God, I was that close from getting that damn tight, that, that winner of that thing. What? I was that close, man. To what? Dying? To, to be in the chair. Dude, don't str don't stress it, angry grandpa. Do not stress it. Like food challenges are tough. I've seen people who do these food challenges. Like, there's a couple foodies I'm subscribed to on YouTube. You know, Joe Hassan, Matt Stoney, uh, just to name a few. Freaking, what's his name? Kilo Crew, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many, like, it's insanity. These people are not freaking human. When I'm sitting here watching these people on YouTube, like we got this giant ass platter of food, it's never been conquered and never defeated. And then like 20 minutes later, they're sitting there going, burp. And it's like, dude, I'm not going to lie, YouTube. When I see people out there on YouTube who, who produce actual content, not just sitting here drinking and talking, I feel self-conscious about my YouTube. I feel like my YouTube channel is not entertaining enough, you know? Because there are people out there who are taking jet-propelled engines and attaching them to fucking electric scooters to make them go faster or gas-powered scooters or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's the truth. I feel inadequate with my YouTube channel when I see people out there who are actually conquering food challenges, you know? Or it's like Cobra tries to do a, or it's like Cobra tries to do a fucking food challenge, and I feel, and I fail every food challenge I, I do. Like, I'm sorry, but the King Cobra JFS, now it's a party documentary, was a fucking joke. Because I couldn't complete the wing challenge or the T-Rex burger challenge. And on top of that, my old apartment was so disgustingly filthy that I can't believe I let anyone film my old apartment like that. And I hate myself for it, but... It is what it is. The fact that people are still willing to watch my crappy videos, even though I'm not very entertaining. But as soon as I get my account out of the negative and I get my rent paid, then I'll be able to get my dad something for his birthday, even if it's just like something as simple as a happy birthday, dad, thanks for being awesome kind of thing, you know. I'll be able to get my friends something for their birthday. I promised Michael Baldwin, Darth Lenny, I'd get him a badass sword. And the one I showed him that I wanted to get him originally is no longer available on the website. However, I found a pretty bitchin' sword I want to get him once I get the money. Uh, maybe for like his birthday or something, you know? Because Darth Lenny's a good friend. He's a solid dude. You couldn't ask for nicer people, dude. You know? There's a reason why I have a small group of friends. Because the small group of friends I have have been solid to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, you want to be my friend? You want to hang out? That's cool. You know what I'm saying? But, like, if you just want to be my friend or girlfriend or whatever, just because I'm King Cobra, 
fuck that, dude. I got enough clout chasers in my life. You want to be friends with me because I'm a good dude? And, you know, I have a lot to bring to the table. Then, you know what I'm saying? Cool, man. Like, I don't have a shit ton of alcohol neither. It's just this little cup right here. Me and Alex pretty much drank all the vodka that he brought over. And we're sitting here watching music videos. And I freaking passed out in my chair. And Alex took off after I fell asleep from drinking a little too much. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. I appreciated him not trying anything. You know, I don't judge Alexander Campbell for being trans or bisexual, gay, whatever the fuck, as long as he ain't a sicko. So, like, that's the thing of it, dude, is people are so quick to call me transphobic and this and that. And it's like, dude, shut the fuck up. Okay, I know plenty of people who are part of LGBTQ+. And that's exactly the reason why I fight for them to have equality. Just so they're like, I'm sick and tired of straight cisgendered folks and all their blah, blah, bullshit. It's like, hey, you know what? Ladies and gays, trans and non-binaries and queers and bisexuals, we're not all like that, okay? It's the truth. If you treat anyone else like they're all the same based off of fucking fly, based off their fucking stereotypes, you get labeled a fucking transphobe, racist, sexist, etc., etc. But when they do it to you, it's just fair game, isn't it? And like, can we stop the fucking hatred? As long as you ain't a sicko, who gives a shit? You want to identify as a non-binary transgender tree who also identifies as a dog and other kin and your pronouns are they, them, dog, tree. I'm not sure how that works out, but how does it personally affect me? That's the bigger thing of it. Like, yeah, okay, people who identify as non-binary, it's a little weird, but how does it personally affect me? It doesn't, and we're all a little bit weird and fucked off in our own special way. As long as I say, I, I, as long, like I've been saying, YouTube, as long as you ain't a sicko, who gives a shit, you know? Consent is everything, so, like, fuck sickos, okay? Fuck necrophiliacs, fuck pedophiles, fuck neophiles, fuck bestialiacs, fuck incest, and fuck rape. And fuck rape, that's the forbidden six. Do you know how much crap I get for just because I'm friends with Alex Campbell? It's like, welcome to being a celebrity, dude, to be honest with you. You know, not bad for dyeing my hair black all by myself. Not bad at, not bad at all. I think every month or so, I want to dye my hair black when I can afford it because I like having black hair. I haven't had black hair in a long time, dude. So tomorrow, when I get the rest of my Patreon money... I will do a personal shout out for all of my Patreon subscribers outside of the public 
part of it. And then when I get more money, freaking, I'll, I'll figure out something for an awesome video for my Patreon subscribers. Because I'm not going to lie, having those Patreon subscribers really helps out at the first of the month, dude. You know what I'm saying? Also, it's September. Hashtag never forget. To be fair, I, I deserve to get made fun of for crying on 9-11 last year. Because in the past, I've done 9-11 videos where it's like I talk about my dream house and how I want to build it. At the same time, talking about, you know, other things. And it feels tactless and disrespectful to their memory. So, yeah, I'm sorry about that. To be fair, if someone came up to me and said, Oh, hey, hey, Cobra, we can prevent sickos. We can prevent sickos, every mass shooting, and 9-11 from ever happening. But all you got to do is say, you can't build your dream house for the rest of your life. I'm like, you know what? I would sacrifice my clock-towered mansion to prevent those things. In, all, in, all, in my defense... And, like, I feel, like, extremely tactless and, like, the reason why I cried during the last time I did a video on that topic, and to be fair, it, it just, it hit me, dude. I'm sitting here watching this live stream and people doing coverage on the event. And I know it's been 20 years since it happened, but that doesn't mean that people are, are not allowed to, like, pay tribute, you know? I get so pissed off with these assholes who are like, oh my god, you know. Shit that Campbell has said on his channel. No offense, but when I called him out on it, he was like, oh, I'm sorry. He was dealing with crap with his dad. And, like, he was having a crap day. I'm like, I get that, bud. But, like, wow, you know. So many people, like, I was in fourth grade when September 11th happened, YouTube. I was in Mr. Kushner's class, fourth grade, getting bullied and picked on by everyone in school, including the girl I had a major crush on. Eh. Now the joke's on Dilly Perucci because it's like I got 41,000 subscribers. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I even had the Alicia Rohde walking by me at one point. I didn't recognize her at first because there's, there's a lot of chicks that exist, exist around the world that look very similar to her. And, like, she walked by me with her boyfriend at the time, and I pretty much ignored her because it's like, you see a chick with a dude, you pretty much ignore it. It's the same with that cute goth chick I saw at Loaf and Jug the other day. This chick was cute, too, and she was with her boyfriend, and I stopped to hold the door for both of them just to be polite, you know? I don't give a fuck how big your boyfriend is, honey. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. You can't legally hit me because I'm autistic. I don't go out of my way to cause trouble, but if trouble comes my way, I'll be the last motherfucker you'll ever fuck with. Like, I'll size you up as a dude and be like, eh, I could kick their ass, but that's not what it's about. It's about being a gentleman. 
And fuck the hypocrisy of it, dude. You got some dude stalking Alicia Rohde's Instagram because she finds him attractive. It's not creepy and it's sexual harassment. And I'm like, that is so fucking typical, dude. I don't have any grudges towards Alicia Rohde or anyone from Valley City for that matter. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? Like when Alicia Rohde was like, oh, hey, that's Saunders. I feel bad about rejecting him in high school. It kind of feels like you're only saying that because I'm more famous than you are on social media. And you realize that my trolls are creepier than I am. And I turned out to be a decent guy. So, like, what the fuck is that? That's the kind of confidence that keeps me going, to be honest. Alicia Rohde doesn't have to fuck me or date me. It's the simple fact of... Oh, that's Saunders. I wish I wouldn't have rejected him in high school. Junior Jaime would be shitting himself, going, Ugh. There's been a couple of times I thought I've seen her in town, and like I double take for a minute. I'm like, no, that can't be her. Then when some asshole from Wyoming was stalking her Instagram because he's got muscles and a fucking lots of money. She didn't have a problem with him stalking her. Like, oh my God, you guys, I stole this photo off her Instagram and like, she's just the best. I'm like, dude, I can smell the bullshit and the hypocrisy a mile away because and it's laughable because none of them fuckers are as famous as I am. I'll admit it, dude, like getting rejected by chicks like Alicia Rohde growing up, it sucked. Getting rejected by chicks like Daily Perucci and Alicia Rohde. I have good taste in attractive women, so that's my downfall, I guess. And I'm girl crazy, but that's beside the point. <laughs> yeah. And I would like to apologize for bringing her up on social media in the first place. Because my trolls have harassed Alicia Rohde and her family just because I think she's cute and I used to go to high school with her. It's honestly pathetic. Like, the trolls, the trolls are so insanely jealous, dude. Like, damn, Cobra went to high school with some really hot chicks. And then all that does is make – all that honestly does is make Alicia Rohde feel sorry for me because it's like, you know, Josh is weird, but, he, you know, he's all right. He don't deserve the harassment he gets. And it's like, I don't give a fuck if Alicia Rohde's got a boyfriend or not. She's doing her thing and I'm doing my thing. You know, that's the whole point. Like, part of being a ladies' man is knowing when to back off and play it cool. I don't care if it's Ellen, Alicia Rohde, whoever. You know what I'm saying? Or whoever the fuck their name is. You know what I'm saying? It's And you want to call me a simp for doing it, but it's like, how many times do you hear women complain about men being assholes? And it's like, as soon as you're trying to be the nice guy, you're simp shamed for it. Just to have women bitch about the assholes they've dated by the time they're 35, 40 years old. I pretty much, 
you know, just doing my thing. Honestly, that's the only, not trying to be a dick, but it's the truth. That's the only reason my trolls harass Ellen is because, oh, hey, Josh knows some really cute babes. I wish I knew cute girls kind of thing. And I'm like, you could make friends with of age women if you spent less time harassing King Cobra. It's the truth. My trolls are sitting there going, you need to get laid. And it's like, I can tell my trolls are not getting laid. I can tell my trolls are not getting laid because they spend all day trying to fuck with King Cobra. And all it does is get people to make make comments like, you know what? I feel sorry for Cobra because his trolls are assholes. And I, I dig his videos. He's humble about his YouTube fame. And he doesn't let the trolls get to him. Wow. You may sit there and say, oh, hey, nice guys finish last. But when women start to spend their 30s and 40s bitching about the assholes they've dated in their 20s, all of a sudden the guy they rejected for being creepy, quote unquote, when the dude was doing nothing more than acknowledging, hey, you're pretty. Like women, just like men, crave that attention. It, it feels good to acknowledge to be acknowledged as you're a good looking person. But to be fair, men can be super creepy. And that's kind of the stereotype, isn't it? Like no one sees women as creepy when you're creeping on a dude that's way the fuck out of your league, ladies. Uh, that's the bullshit of it, to be honest. You got some fucking chick who's like 900 pounds overweight. Uh, getting past, getting, that's the truth, dude. I'm not trying to fat shame neither. That's just how hypocritical the sexes are. Like, you got some woman who's 900 pounds overweight chasing after a dude with six-pack abs, and the second he rejects her because he's into chicks who work out, who are gym rats, all of a sudden it's like, hey, he's a fat shame. He's a fat shaming piece of shit. Right. Could you imagine, though, if, like, a dude tried pulling that crap? You can't handle me because I'm a strong male. You'd never hear the end of it, too. It'd be like, dude. You're a guy who can't take no for an answer. Go fuck yourself. And now all these women who spend hours going to the gym to work out are getting rejected by dudes who want fat chicks who are just trying to score fucking sympathy and cool points. Like, I'm not fat phobic. Kind of look at me, you know. To be fair, there are some people who are into fat women, and as long as they're of age, alive, and consenting, who gives a shit? If they're non-related, of age, alive, and consenting, outside of that, who gives a shit? If you're of age, alive, consenting, human, of age, alive, consenting, and human. That's not unreasonable. <clears throat> like 20 years ago, 20 goddamn years ago, if you would have identified as a fucking tree, people would have locked you up in a mental institution. These days, it's like you have to accept it because that's their pronouns. Yeah, but aren't pronouns like a self-given nickname? 
like giving yourself a nickname. That being said, if you're a decent motherfucker and you have pronouns, I will respect that as long as you're a decent person, you know? I'm sorry, but if you're a miserable piece of shit and you're taking advantage of LGBTQ+, plus, just because you want people to fucking whatever your deal is, you know? No, nah, dude, there are people out there who abuse the trans system, and it's bullshit. And we can't have a conversation about that without someone being like, oh, you're a transphobe. I'm like, excuse me? If I was a transphobe, I wouldn't say shit about it. I'd sit there and fucking laugh. Like, oh, look at the asshole at the L.A. fucking wee spa. Oh, my God. If I was a fucking trans gay phobe, I wouldn't say shit when people try to ruin it for the fucking movement. Like, it's, it's hard to be a straight person who's cisgendered, who cares about LGBTQ+, because you get told you're just kissing our ass because of straight guilt or some shit like that. And it's so fucking stupid. And it's like, you know what? Maybe it's more than that. Maybe it's because I want to make the world a better place and I fucking hate sickos just as much as I hate people being intolerant towards LGBTQ. But that's not good enough, Cobra, no. And then to be told, you're not allowed to speak on these issues because you're not a part of the community because you're straight and biologically male and white, so you're not allowed to speak up on LGBTQ slash racial issues. Okay, so then if I don't speak out against the issues, I'm labeled a racist and a sexist and a homophobic piece of shit, but if I do speak out against the issues, I get told, this isn't your fight to fight. So I'm like, what am I supposed to do? I try to be a decent person, I get crapped on. If I try to be a fucking asshole, naturally I get crapped on. So it's like, I won't say shit then. I'll just sit here and make my YouTube videos, dye my hair black, and give a fuck what anybody thinks. Like, fuck off, dude. All the trolls being like, you need to get laid, Cobra. And I'm like, you know what? I'd rather build my clock tower dream house before it end my dry spell, to be honest. Building my clock towered mansion and being rich enough to comfortably maintain it for the rest of my life is more important than getting laid. I would have solar panels, energy saving solar panels on my clock towered mansion on the roof on either side of the clock tower, which would make it eco friendly. And then my clock towered mansion would run off of wind energy and solar energy. And all the plumbing in my house would be eco friendly. I'm into like those Victorian Second Empire, you know, houses with the cupola towers, the 1870s. Kind of, you know. You'd recognize the style of house as soon as you saw it. You ever watch the Yo Mama series? A true goth can laugh at themselves and laugh at the subculture for for being hypocritical because the goth subculture is so fucking hypocritical you know it's like okay we can't afford to spend four hundred dollars on a pair of like really nice trip pants so you go to hot topic or spencer's to buy a pair to accentuate your goth look and then you're being called a fucking poser by the assholes who fucking copy everyone else it's like, if you want to be a nonconformist, you have to copy everything goths do. And it's like, dude, okay, as somebody who's goth, I put my own spin on it, you know? I don't try to copy someone else's goth style. I put my own spin on it. 
I, I, you know, like goth hippie with like a little bit of cowboy, just a little sprinkle it, you know what I'm saying? And people call me a poser for it, but it's like, heh, both sides of my family own ranches. Go fuck yourself. You are that fucking woo close. That was that far away, man. Yeah, the whole thing. Like again, I appreciate Campbell bringing over the alcohol. Like people call him a fucking mooch. He didn't throw it in my face. You know what I'm saying? He was just like, "What up, Cobra? Can I hang out? Hey, man, I brought over some booze. You want to hang out and drink? Cool. You know. Get all the fries, man. I lost the fucking challenge. And I'm proud of Alex Campbell, dude. He's been clean off meth for he's been clean off of meth for a couple months now, and I can tell. Like as somebody who's been around, you know, because marijuana is illegal, just like crystal meth. If you do marijuana, and you have an addictive personality, you get sick and tired of the high that weed gives you, so you chase something stronger. So marijuana is not a gateway drug. Addictive personalities and lies are the gateway drug. It's the truth when the fucking D.A.R.E. program is just like, hey, kids, don't try marijuana. It's a gateway drug. And it's just like, bullshit. What you know, and in my experience, because people want to be like, Oh my god, Cobra's tried cocaine and acid, oh, and magical mushroom, what a piece of shit. And it's like, Well, in my experience, when I first tried marijuana, I was, I, I was not peer pressured to try it. One of my buddies pulled out a pipe and we were smoking cigarettes, and I'm like, What's that? and he goes, a marijuana pipe and I'm like oh, edgy you know what I'm saying like the first time I smoked pot I was a senior in high school and thank you to my buddy Tevin Reams who turned me on to marijuana because honestly I love smoking weed for my Asperger's it's fucking great and speaking of which, where the fuck did I put that son of a... Okay, there it is. Ooh. Ooh. It's like, whoa, well, well, look at that. Cobra's alcohol is empty. How's it going to keep the entertainment going? One of my fans that I'm friends with here in town gave me a rechargeable battery. That I could plug into the wall. And then my fans will send me cartridges of like CBD, Delta 8, Delta 9, Delta 10 kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. My YouTube fans <laughs> will send me CBD and Delta 8 products and free cigarettes and free tobacco and hot sauces and uh, cool t shirts and shit. Are you fucking happy? Now get that goddamn camera out of my face now! Get it out! <laughs> Whenever I get sad because angry grandpa passed away, I watch his videos and it cheers me up. And it's like, he's in a better place, dude. 
you know what I'm saying? Whenever I bitch about my dry spell, I stop and I go, you know what? Shut the fuck up, Cobra. I'd rather be in a fucking dry spell than in a fucking relationship where the woman I'm with don't don't appreciate me and treats me like shit. Like, what's he gonna do next? Uh, speaking of... Yeah. Fall is here and your patio is the place to be with a little help from Lowe's. And you know what? Can you honestly blame angry grandpa for being angry? I feel like once you get to a certain age, you've earned the right to be cranky and crabby and chromogenist and you know what I'm saying? So check out Angry Grandpa's videos if you're new to the whole AGP scene. I'll get back to the spicy mukbang video after I watch this video. I have extreme ADHD. It, it comes with having Asperger's kind of thing. When Angry Grandpa was 16 years old, he got his first car, a 1955 Chevy Bel Air. Woo 1955 Chevy Bel Air. I love classic cars. I'm more of a Ford guy myself, although classic Chevys are where it's at. If someone said, hey, Cobra, what? I'll give you a Corvette. What year do you want? If I had a Corvette, a 77 Stingray would be my cup of tea. If I had a classic Corvette, I'd rock a 77 Stingray. Oh, the body lines on that car. Oh, and it's like, dude. Classic cars were made better and more durable. Today's cars are pieces of shit. You know that, YouTube? He lost it not even a year later when his sister drove it to California and it broke down and she sold it from underneath him. Dad's only had two items on his bucket list for his entire life. Number one was to own his own house. Number two was 55 Chevy. Last year I got him the house. This year, the car. Ah, uh, dude, this video gets you in the feelers. Man, the only thing I want to do on my bucket list is to build my clock tower dream house and be comfortably rich the rest of my life. And I no longer have to worry about my account going in the negative. And I no longer have to worry about people being starving, people who are homeless and starving, you know? It's like, that's the truth. When you win the lottery, you want to donate to all these charities, but you can't donate to all of them, dude. You know, like, if I won the lottery, I would donate a million dollars to St. Jude's. That's not even a question. That's just, you know what I'm saying? You stop complaining about your dry spell when you start thinking, imagine what parents have to go through when, you know, ugh. Thank you to the fan who sent the Delta, the Delta 10 uh, e-liquid cartridge. It definitely gets the job done, man. Perfectly legal. And ain't no one gonna say shit. Hold up.
<laughs> People are like, hey, dude, Alicia Rohde wants to join your cult. And I'm like, I'll believe that when pigs fly. <laughs> I know, like, watching, <coughs> excuse me, watching, <coughs> oh, goddamn, cough to get off, <coughs> excuse me, watching me, like, briefly have my hair post-dyed video, not very entertaining, but at least I did it, hey, and then watching me fucking go off on camera about how the trolls are pieces of shit for calling me a scammer. Not very entertaining. It's like, dude, could you do something else for a video? <clears throat> I'm like, okay. I'm going to review vapor cartridges that my fans sent me. And if, like, Pop-Tarts or some random shit's got a new flavor coming out, fucking review it and just, you know. It's content, dude. Ugh. I have a uh, car racing game on my PlayStation 3 that I play. It's, uh, what is it, Midnight Club Dub Edition. You know, it's one of those, and you play it on the PlayStation 3, and you can unlock a 55 Chevy. You know what I'm saying? And when I saw that you could unlock a 55 Chevy on that game, it made me think of Angry Grandpa. So what I did was, I just, you know, I wanted to create a 55 Chevy on that game that I could race other people and other players with. Just something to, like, inspire that, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm goth, I made the whole thing black. And because Angry Grandpa had a hot temper and, like, that was just his deal. And he it was able to, like, entertain people with it. And because the trolls can fuck off, the license plate on it says, fuck you. Like, I'm not trying to be a dick. <clears throat> but when my girlfriend Summer broke up with me, I was just like, man, <clears throat> this sucks. How could this day get any worse? And then Kid Behind the Camera went on camera and he was like, what's going on, you guys? Kid Behind the Camera here. But you West here. And it's just like, Oh, by the way, Angry Grandpa died. And I'm like, dude, seriously? Uh, fucking hell. Like, I remember that day, and I was just like, I'm fucking done, dude. I'm fucking done. Life is so fucking goddamn depressing, and all we can do is... People are fucking assholes, and life is so goddamn depressing. All you can do is just keep going, dude. You know? All you can do is keep going. God. When I learned about <coughs> Cool Taste's childhood, I was just like, okay, that is really fucking miserably fucked up, dude. Jesus fucking Christ, I hate sickos. Sometimes it takes me a while to be a man of my word, but, you know, I'm good for my word, dude. That, that was something that I'm instilled with. As an adult, I am instilled with two things. Number one, or three things. Number one, you never give up. Number two, you be a person of your word. I don't care if you're a female or male. 
Okay, fuck the gender-based bullshit. You be a person of your word. You say you're going to do it, then fucking do it. And number three, you know what I'm saying? Don't let life get you down and just keep going. I've been bullied and harassed my entire life. You know what I'm saying? To go from having chicks who've rejected me to those same women going, shit. He became a sexy goth bad boy rock star on YouTube. I could have dated him before he was famous. Oh! You know, and it's just like... Jesus fucking Christ. I see people out there who go through way worse than what I've gone through. People who are going through harder times, you know? And it just, it makes me humble. I'm not going to sit here and say I feel sorry for certain individuals because people don't want to be felt sorry for, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I feel sorry for, eh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want people to feel sorry for me because my trolls are the biggest assholes and I struggle with autism. I, you know what I'm saying? If you support me, cool. If you don't, that's cool, too. That's your, that's your opinion. I really don't give a shit at this point. <coughs> I'm going to sheath this motherfucker until the battery runs low. I fucking hate sickos. I honestly hate sickos more than angry grandpa dying. It's like, you know what? Angry grandpa dying, it's a part of life. It's sad. But the fact that there are, pe that there are people out there who do some depraved, fucked off shit for sex and shit, it's just, ugh. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it kills any sort of mood for sex in the first place. And it makes it that much easier to wait patiently. It's like, I hate sickos, and I don't want to get a chick pregnant. So it's like, well then, quit bitching about your fucking dry spell, because it could be worse. Especially when you're King Cobra JFS, and you have a lot of fangirls that want to... Yeah, okay, I'll just stop right there. <laughs> and I, I can't imagine why my fangirls want to fuck me. It couldn't be because, you know... I discover a new artist on YouTube by the name of Sam Smith. I recognize that pop kind of womanizer sound. And I'm just like, I want to sing that fucking song to show off for the of age ladies. Oops. Doc Holliday and Tombstone. Oops. Doc Holiday and Tombstone versus King Cobra's Trolls. I'd be Doc Holiday and my trolls would be Ike. Maybe poker's just not your game, Ike. I know. Let's have a spelling contest. Got some of that longer OG Kush. Oh, that's real funny, Cobra. Why is it called Doc Holiday OG Kush? Because this shit is Wild West good fun and it'll make you fucking cough your ass up. One hit, you're just like. <laughs> Kids are more precious than rock and roll, dude. You know what I'm saying? I, I remember being a kid in junior high, spurging out, looking up ghost videos on YouTube, and studying the paranormal, and just spurging out on that. And Google videos, if you can remember that. You know, that's how old I am, before YouTube was ever a thing. We had this thing called Google Videos, which was similar, but not quite. 
and YouTube was still just being developed at that point. That's how fucking old King Cobra is. Yep. So YouTube itself is like 31 years old based off of that. And before I had YouTube, I had very successful jobs before I moved to Casper and became famous on YouTube. Nobody harassed me at my job before becoming famous on YouTube. You know what I'm saying, Tubes? Like, my first job was a paper route in Valley City, North Dakota, rocking with the Times record. And it was an honest job. It taught me the value of a hard-earned dollar, YouTube, which is something called work ethic. People want to sit here and call me a lazy, autistic piece of shit who needs to get a fucking job. But it's like you fucking miserable cunts will sit here and harass me at every job I get just so you get me fired. Just so you can then turn around and be like, you need to get a job, loser. And it's like, well, it's your own goddamn fault that you have no life. And that Cobra rules your sad existence. So really, I should be thanking my trolls because thanks to you harassing me in my old apartment, I got into a much better, bigger, and more comfortable space where everyone supports me. You know, and thanks to my YouTube trolls, I'm now forced to be an entrepreneur. And being an entrepreneur is fun. I get to make my own, my own hours doing my own goddamn thing. Like the last four years, I've been successful selling magic wands on Etsy, for fuck's sake. And the trolls calling me a sicko or just projecting their own insecurities about being one onto me. And they're so jealous of my YouTube fame. Otherwise, they wouldn't harass me or fuck with me or call me names. You know what I'm saying? I may be autistic, but I can analyze the situation a lot quicker than most folks would. And most folks couldn't take the bullying I receive on YouTube. And the reason why I don't fucking bitch about it is because everyone gets bullied on YouTube. The internet is a fucking shit pool of fucking human waste assholes. You're either somebody trying to make a difference or somebody just trying to be a dick. And it's like, okay, I dislike Justin Bieber. You don't see me creating an entire subreddit and spending all day harassing him. I would rather get better at guitar and become a famous YouTuber and establish myself as a celebrity and be like, I could give four fucks less what that fucking Canuck asshole is doing. No offense to my Canadian fans. Justin Bieber calls himself a metalhead and I'm like... Looking over at my BC Rich guitar, I'll be like, <laughs> like I hate my trolls more than I hate Justin Bieber, and I hate sickos more than I hate Justin Bieber. It's like. I just like his music, and he's insufferable. I'm not going to spend all day harassing him like my trolls harass me. That's a waste of my time. And I'm certainly not going to spend all day harassing my trolls. That's a waste of my time as well. I want to let my trolls waste their fucking lives away while Cobra's getting wasted and, and getting more subscribers on YouTube. <sighs> That's the fucking cold truth of it. That's the thing of it. I hated Justin Bieber along with everyone else when it was trendy, trendy to do so. But I got over it when I, when I became a celebrity myself.
The only reason I stopped obsessing over hating the Beebs is because it's like, what does that get me? It doesn't make me more famous. Wouldn't, that, wouldn't my time be more productively spent getting better at guitar? Being able to just openly shred on YouTube to the point where the comments are blowing up. Like, how do I shred likes the Cobra? And I'm like, practice makes perfect, man. Okay? If I have any fans who are still in high school and they want to vape and smoke and drink like Cobra, wait till you're 21 and up to do any of that, to be honest. And uh, if, like, you're being bullied or picked on, that's life, dude. I grew up being bullied my entire life, having every chick I like reject me since the fourth grade. And I still talk to chicks that are way too hot for me to talk to. That's called having balls, you two. You feel me on that? Chicks dig that confidence, B. And it don't matter if you're going bald or if your trolls are the biggest jealous pieces of shit. It's like, despite my trolls harassing chicks that I like, they still talk to me, and the trolls don't have that. I could literally take a break from YouTube and come back and still be more famous than these fucking miserable cunts, dude. Honestly, calling my trolls cunts is an insult to the word cunts. I see YouTubers that I watch getting bullied, and I'm just like, wow, trolls are fucking the worst. Are you familiar with a channel by the name of Squirmy and Grubs? Shane Burkhan and his wife, Hannah, are awesome people, and trolls like to bully them, and I'm just like, who does that? Dude, fuck my Asperger's. Who does that? And I'm like, I'm not trying to say anything, but if Shane can find somebody, so can I. I get so sick and tired of people saying, just because you're disabled, you're not worthy to have someone or whatever, you know? It's so fucking retarded. Cobra said the R word. I'm like, what? If black people are allowed to use the N word and call themselves the N word... And why can't special needs people own the R word and be like, I'm not going to allow it to be an insult. And to be fair, there's ignorance in every race. Kiss my Asperger's. Oh, Cobra's such a racist. Did you see that? He did blackface on YouTube. I can't believe. I'm like, what? Cobra a racist? Dude, fuck that. As long as you ain't a sicko, everyone, everything outside of that, you know what I'm saying? It's fucking dumb, dude. So fucking dumb. Like, you get depressed about watching YouTubers you like pass away, and then that's just like the tip of the iceberg, you know? And then you see society and 9-11 and, like, all these fucking mass shootings and fucking the COVID pandemic, people dying of COVID-19. And you're just like, for fuck's sake, can we just chill out on the bullshit for like five goddamn minutes? And they got people who are trying to normalize sick shit, and I'm just like, I'm done with that. You know, you, you have that feeling where you're just like, Fuck off, dude. Straight up, fuck right the fuck off. It's like you think Justin Bieber's annoying. It's like, oh, it could be worse.
and people are going to give me shit for coughing on the like the original live stream. I take pride in my singing voice, and it shows. Because I'm able to sing like a lot of artists. And really, it's not about being famous for being a musician. It's, it's, it's about keeping the music alive, you know. That's what it's really about, YouTube. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you got signed by a black artist and you made fun, fun of black people, wouldn't that be a bit insensitive? Flexing your white privilege kind of thing, you know? It's disgusting. You know what pisses me off? That Will Smith got so much crap for standing up for his wife, the mother of his children. It's like Chris Rock was being <coughs> a cunt. <coughs> like every award show, he'd always bag on Will Smith and his wife. Every fucking award show. And it's just like, dude, that shit's stale. If you want to be funny, like bag on everyone. Why don't you know what I'm saying? Like, what should be with Will Dog? Now, if Will Smith's wife was going through chemo treatment because of cancer and he made fun of her, it would have been 10,000 times worse. But regardless of what the disease is, you don't make fun of a woman for having short hair. That's just stupid, dude. You don't know what the fuck she's going through. And if she makes it about, if she makes her hair issues public, you know, how would it feel if, like, the shoe was flipped? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what we call an N-word moment, as the boondocks would say, the anime. I'm not going to say the word because, you know, I'm white. Eh. And people like to point out that the Scottish and the Irish are also called the N-word. But the biggest difference of that YouTube is they were not forced to come here like uh, people of color were. You feel me? You got to educate yourselves, people. Educate yourselves. People are like, yeah, well, the whites were enslaved, too. And I'm like, if you want to have that argument, shit. Slavery has existed since the dawn of time, and that's the bitch of it. And now we're all fucking slaves to our cell phones and social media. Fuck me, dude. <sighs> And that's not necessarily a, a diss because YouTube is great. If you want to learn how to play an Ozzy Osbourne song, you can just fucking look it up. Marty Shorts here with GuitarJams.com. You know. Freaking Michelangelo video here. Yeah. Michelangelo video is fucking beast on a guitar, dude. Speed kills, fucking... The dual guitar. Dude, it's fucking sick. Metals. I can't watch this this video right now. No offense to you, if you this fuck it just brings up feelers. Oh fuck the trolls, dude. They're a bunch of fucking miserable cocksuckers. You know that? I don't have to go out of my way to harass my trolls. I don't have to go out of my way. To scare off girls they like, get them fired from jobs, harass their their landlords, etc., etc. All I gotta do is go live and do this. Now, I'm not allowed to smoke tobacco or marijuana indoors or anything like that because, you know, it's illegal. But, well, the fact that marijuana is illegal when George Washington, our first fucking president, smoked it for his erectile dysfunction and toothaches, I'm just like, get the fuck out of here. <sighs> Yeah.
You know what the beautiful thing about that, too, is <coughs> as long as you're in a sicko, who gives a fuck? Outside of that, like, you could have a Satanist and a Christian smoking pot. They're both in the same room. And it doesn't matter their religion because they're sharing Mother Earth's plans. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's fucking stupid, dude. That there's a war on drugs. As an the war on drugs or is as like a the most hypocritical thing on the planet. You tried alcohol prohibition. That just leads people to like making their own goddamn alcohol. People are dying because people didn't know how to make it properly. Why does that sound familiar with a lot of shit today? Not just, you know. I would say keep crystal meth and heroin illegal and legalize everything else and tax the fuck out of it. Put the money back into the economy. And instead of throwing people in jail for non-violent drug offenses, you should like totally offer them treatment. It's no different with alcohol, dude. If alcohol becomes a fucking problem for people, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with homies and friends sharing a drink. And if people want to be a dick about it, that's their fucking prerogative, which is jealous of Cobra at the end of the day. I'm 24-7 on the go all the time. Shopify makes it very easy to be connected with my store. Oh, keep me on the camera gets trolled just like any other YouTuber, dude. I grew up watching Angry Grandpa and watching him lose his shit. I'm like, dude, this is nuts. What? <laughs> this beat is fucking sick, dude. I want to plug it in the chat real quick. Get this cool Cobra shout out. No puns intended, literally. Like, who the fuck runs it? Very fine, much like that. What's it? That's nuts. You're not going to spend fourteen thousand dollars on a book to burn it. What kind of fucking what? I guess pretty to a point, at least. Shit. Like, you know, Subscribing to good people on YouTube isn't the problem. The problem is people. Who are too fucking lazy to work for that kind of fame, dog. You know what I'm saying? That's the truth. You want to harass King Cobra, Kid Behind the Camera, or Shane Burkhart, or whoever, on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to make you any more fucking famous. And people don't make it about their disability or their struggle or whatever, because we're all struggling with something, whether it be more severe or less severe. Just hearing about what cool taste I have to go through as, you know, I'm not going to get into that. I'm just I'm so mortified by that. And the fact that he's blind on top of it is just. His life is so unfair, dude. It really is. People can. People who are being jerks, fuck them, dude. I see people bullying Magic Martin on YouTube, and I'm like, that's a cool dude who gets bullied like I do on YouTube. And I said, fuck that, dude. I said, I'm a one in a bar, tactical soap, he's a fan of my videos. You know, he's special needs like I am, and I'm like, I'm not gonna have that crap. You wanna pick on Magic Martin? Why don't you pick on me, you pussy? It's the truth. I'm like, oh, I got on Magic Martin. Oh, wow. <clears throat> it's really how you deal with the trolls, dog. You know what I'm saying, YouTube? You can't let them get to you. You just can't let them get to you. Namaste, motherfucker. <laughs> I would 
totally buy this beat if I could afford it. This beat is sick. And watch you saying that because of the fucking cobra on the front looking like fucking Arbuck up in this bitch. All I is purple references. It'd be like the worst fucking pickup line to you walk into a goddamn bar and you're just like, hey, hey. You like Pokemon? Can I take a Pikachu? You want to see my Arbuck? Oh! You know, my trolls are more disgusting than my teeth, to be honest. That's pretty sad. I don't let my trolls get to me because there are people out there struggling with bigger fucking issues. You know, the world's a pretty fucked up place and we're all struggling with something. So it just makes us human at that point. To a point, you know what I'm saying? Fuck sickos, man. <laughs> spent all the energy fucking with my trolls like the way they've been doing for the last 10 plus years to me I wouldn't be as good a guitar as I am today I'm like what's more important harassing my trolls back or getting better at guitar so I can make a name for myself on YouTube hmm Play too much of that goddamn beat cuz I might get a copyright strike. Oh, jeez. I don't get copyright strikes, man. If you go to play an Ozzy Osbourne song out loud on YouTube, his record company can flag it for copyright. I get that. But at the same time, if they if they get credit for the song, they'll just take credit for the song. How is it an issue? Like, you're spreading the music around. Because then you can post the same, the same goddamn fucking song with the lyric video and it doesn't get flagged for copyright. So, like, for example, if I do a vocal cover and the song's out loud, YouTube can be like, that's copyright. But then, like, if it's a lyric video, it doesn't get flagged as copyright. So that's a weird little loophole I've noticed in the system. Dude, this fake cartridge is so happen, bro. Because this motherfucker broke on me. I was like, well, shit, it is what it is. I'm not honestly not fucking worried about it. <clears throat> I'll provide content for the like and not trolls. There are plenty of fucking YouTubers to watch out there, so it's like, dog, if you don't like my content, why the fuck you watching? <coughs> There's no law against vaping indoors. It's not like tobacco where they're pretty much holding the same fucking laws to a point. But honestly, the trolls can fuck off. <coughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to another mukbang with me, Martin Fresh. All right, you guys, today I've got Whistling Dixie. Guys, I'm trying out a new Nashville hot chicken spot. I was actually going to get Dave's hot chicken, but my girl... Yeah, well, the trolls got burned because they were sucking 
King Cobra's whistle and Dixie. Yeah. We took one look at Cobra's cock and they were like, oh wait, I wish mine was that big. Shit. The trolls are really good at sucking my cock. Fucking A, it's like drying out a Capri Sun pouch. Like, I don't know how my cock can take that much sucking in one in one bloody minute. I'm like, there are other YouTubers out there who do way more badass shit than I do on my channel. And it's really not about that. It's just about making content, dog. So, I can respect this, what, what he's doing right here on the channel. I see that. All oh, that just the, yeah, you gotta give it a like because I love spicy food. Kim said try a new spot called Whistling Dixie. So I'm trying a new spot. So I've got their natural hot chicken. I've also got their natural hot fish tender. I've got chicken wings. Um, I've also got their uh, chicken sando, natural hot chicken sando. I've got. When you get a Carolina Reaper on an empty stomach. Oh, dude, don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, that's painful. That shit will fucking clear you up, dude. No joke, the Carolina Reapers are mean, dude, mean. And the asshole who made Carolina Reapers was like, that wasn't spicy enough. I'm like, dude, seriously? The fuck is wrong with you, you fucking psycho? Like, I can barely tolerate Carolina Reapers, but fucking A. You gotta go and make one more spicy? Like, dude. It's such a guy thing, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not spicy enough, you pussy. <laughs> uh. Cup fries, and I've also got sauce right here. They're special sauce. And I'm not criticizing the spiciness of this guy's food. That's just the nature of testosterone and men in general. You know, guys do dumb shit like that. I want to vent the world's hottest pepper. One bite could potentially send you to the hospital. <laughs> And I've got ranch, and yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Let's mash this food right now. This is the fish. This is a natural hot fish tender. Kind of cool. Natural hot fish tender. Well, goddamn. That'll, ring, that'll leave a ring of fire on your butthole when you poop that out. I like eating spicy food. It's great for your metabolism, and if you get enough spicy food in your system, you can hallucinate with it. That's a natural high without doing anything like seriously, you know, like shroom or acid-like kind of thing. So like you can hallucinate without having to do acid or shrooms. You just eat enough spicy food and it makes your endorphins kick off and makes you like heat wave. Like, you act like a fish. Acts like a fish, goddamn. You wanna have this thing on YouTube in a hot minute? Johnny Cash's Ring of Fire. It's just King Cobra's trolls are overgrown children. Let's try it out. All right, let's dip it in the sauce. Their special orange sauce. Everybody has the same orange sauce. So if you got some like some kind of tolerance to spicy, like this guy does, or like I do to a point, then this wouldn't be too challenging. But if like you're sensitive to spicy food, you're just like, oh. And really, eating spicy food is not a macho contest. It's just some people don't like it, some people like it, you know? Skip through it a bit here, and it like, devours the entire thing in like 10 minutes and 16 seconds. Fucking beast, dude. Nice. What does it mean to have a library card? It definitely doesn't mean fumbling with a, a computer from 1998. So, what the. Skip back. I am a disgusting human. He 
people are into some weird shit on YouTube, man. As long as it doesn't cross the line, dog. You want to watch people eat and play video games? Cool. But as long as they don't cross the line, fuck off with it. You know what I'm saying, YouTube? It's ridiculous. And, like, it's weird to eat in front of people and have people watch you eat. Like, I get that, dude. It's like, yeah, the food's delicious, but damn, bro. People are like, oh, yeah, eat that cheese curry. Fucking stupid. People are stupid, dude. They really fucking are to a point. You just gotta ignore the stupid assholes who hate you and just do your thing, dude. To a point, you know. To a point. I like this video if you agree. Yeah, I'm gonna discuss. You're not a disgusting human being for eating, dude. That's that's insane how you devour that in like 10 minutes. Damn, dude. Like, yeah, get Cobra if you want to do cool food challenges and like get better at guitar and shit. You gotta stick your shit up. There's a lot of people out there. You know what I'm saying? And it's a friendly competition. Let's just keep it at that. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no need to get into this pissing contest of, oh, I can shred faster than Cobra. It's like, cool. Nobody cares. We both play guitar. Sweet, sweet setup, man. Like, it, it's fucking stupid, dude. Beyond fucking stupid. Bro, that was like 10 minutes flat. That was insane. <clears throat> Get you to a little bit right now. 